what's the impact on Debo? Debo's the one guy. Hold, let's let's slow down for a second. Debo's at camp. Debo's practicing. No one else is. That's a captain. Uh, if they trade him after June one, they save a bunch of cap space. There was some speculation when they drafted Ricky Pearsall that they drafted him to replace D-ball and Debo in a year. What does this mean for Debo? I don't think anything's changed for Debo. I think the impact of Debo has already been seen and the fact that he's come in, in in phenomenal shape and he's here as early as possible. I think Debo, Debo knows that this is most likely his last year with the 49ers. Now, anything can change, but as of right now, it stands to reason that this is probably his last year. And if that is the case, then he's coming in ready as if it's his last year and he's auditioning. So I actually don't think anything changes for Debo except for the fact that maybe he's looking at it going, Okay, now now we know that Jennings is going to be here past this year. We're going to assume that Ayuk will be here past this year. Obviously, they just drafted a rookie. If anything, this cements my thought that I'm most likely not coming back. Yeah. Part of me feels like there's, well, I feel like there's one of two reasons why Debo's out there right now. Is it because he's just a hard worker and he's a great captain? Yeah, maybe. Or... He really wants to prove the Niners wrong or for drafting Pearsall. I mean, it was kind of a shot at him. He's motivated to play here, and this is the, the fire he needed to be the best he can for the 49ers. Or Jennings just got locked up. Ayuk's about to get extended. Pearsall's here for a while. He's showing teams around the league like, hey, I'm, I'm ready to go. Come get me. Adam Peters, we're friends. Mike McDaniel, I love you. D'Amico, how could I'm what you need, and I'm in great shape, and I'm motivated, and I changed my number. And I changed my number. <laughs> the most important part of that was he changed really his important. number. I love how yeah. you just threw that in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I think that uh, because without Jennings being here, there was a possibility that Debo could be back next year. Grant, looking at Pearsall again, he's probably better to be. A, be slotted as the slot receiver. So you're looking at it saying, all right, if I'm Debo, if Jennings is gone, Pearsall slides to the slot. We got Ayuk, we got me. Now it's not likely, but there's a chance that I could come back in that scenario. But now that Jennings is there, it's like, well, clearly Pearsall is here to take my job. So that's what we're going after. Okay, before we get to the last topic, uh, let's do a couple um, super chats. Brother Bob says, I'm here, damn it. JJ is the most important. Stop. Perfect. He is the most important. Caden Camarota says, Hey Grant, I love the videos and astute analysis. I want to see Jordan Mason succeed, play more. He's the most underrated player on the team. Yeah. He's been pretty good in camp so far. The thing about Jordan Mason that they knock with him is, uh, you know, he, he doesn't do much as a, in the pass game. He does a whole lot more in the pass game than Elijah Mitchell does. Yeah, you know, last year though, Grant, I remember at training camp, he was often not on the same page at all with this quarterback. Like multiple times he would run like a Texas route True. and the quarterback was thinking. So that was kind of my theory of like, all right, maybe he's not playing, not because he's not talented. Clearly he is, but he doesn't understand his assignments on third down. And that's why he's struggling to see the field because we know how Kyle is. It's like, if you don't know the ins and outs of everything, you're not going to be on the field. And so that was kind of the thought process there. Well, maybe this year coming in, figuring the right routes out, maybe he's better with the blocking assignments, what have you. That's how he's going to get on the field. Because from a talent standpoint, I think it's clear that Mason, just as a runner, is the second best running back on this team. But there are other things that are expectations from Kyle Shanahan. All I'm saying, I've seen him in two practices this offseason. He looks extremely improved as a receiver. I think he got the picture. You want to get on the field, you need to be a complete back, not just a running back who just averages six yards a carry. Like, sorry, you got to do a little more. So I'm just saying, I think he's improved. Hey, I got to restart Google Chrome real quick. So just hold it down for like 20 seconds. Yeah, you're fine. Is that cool? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. All right. Well, since he's not here, let's take this baby over. All right. For me, I, and I don't know if this is where he's going to go, if he's going to get into the Pearsall thing or if... We're going to move on to the next topic, but I think the biggest impacts on Pearsall. 
as I stated, I think that Ricky is better to be a slot receiver. He does struggle with being pressed on the outside. If he is going to be asked to fill in for Debo and be an outside receiver next year, I think that is an area that he's going to have to improve. And I just think he's better suited to be a slot. Jennings now being here for two years. Does that mean we're only going to get three good years from Pearsall before he's 29 years old and reaching that second deal? Or is it a situation where he just improves and is your outside receiver? But I don't know, man. This this Jennings signing, to me, impacts Pearsall more than it does Debo or Ayuk. 